According to a peer-reviewed study in the prestigious journal Science, skin color variation appears to have existed long before modern humans emerged. Because some of the genetic variants the researchers discovered, coding for both light and dark skin pigmentation, were quite ancient, between 300,000 and 1 million years old. The color of our skin is one of the few human characteristics that is more variable and historically polarizing. One of humanity's most distinctive and stunningly variable features is skin color. The study of various African ethnic groups reveals that our skin's genetic history is more nuanced than previously believed. Indeed, skin tone has varied greatly among humans for at least the last one million years. So concludes an analysis of the genetic variants associated with skin pigmentation in people from several regions of Africa. Surprisingly, the latest findings suggest that some particularly dark skin tones evolved relatively recently from paler genetic variants. In fact, of the darker skin gene variants, three appear to have evolved from less pigmented variants. This means that very dark skin actually evolved from brown skin, according to the scientists. The combined data found eight sites in the human genome that are particularly associated with the level of skin pigmentation. Together, these sites account for about 30% of the variation they found in skin pigmentation. For each of the eight sites of variation, there existed a genetic variant associated with paler skin, and a variant linked to darker skin. Seven of the paler skin variants emerged at least 270,000 years ago, while four of these arose more than 900,000 years ago. But the most shocking discovery was that some gene variations first appeared at least 500,000 years ago, indicating that modern humans and Neanderthals' ancestors may have had moderately dark skin before that time, as opposed to a deep black color. It should be noted that the term lighter skin does not mean the same as white skin. For example, the San Hunter Gatherer populations of southern Africa often have lightly pigmented skin, and belong to one of the most ancient branches of the Homo sapiens family tree. The most interesting observation is that some ancestral light skin traits are shared between the Pygmy San and archaic hominins, such as Neanderthals and Denisovans. This suggests a shared, common ancestry for this trait before the split of these three hominin lineages. Even so, we know very little about how our genes affect its pigment despite how significant it is. We don't yet have any early Homo sapiens DNA because no ancient African hominin has had its genome sequenced. Contrastingly, we have complete DNA from Denisovans and Neanderthals in Eurasia. Therefore, it is unclear whether an Africa fossil represents Homo sapiens or something else entirely. However, Neanderthals did not pass on genes for skin tone to Europeans because skin tone actually was passed down from the last common ancestor. We also need to abandon the idea that Neanderthals resembled contemporary Europeans, because although they had lighter skin that does not mean that they looked European. Nevertheless, being a fossilized hominid is difficult. People are still debating your exact appearance thousands of years after you passed away, and images and recreations can sometimes be used to play out concepts influencing the idea of human evolution. Dark skin is typically associated with Africa, but there are various ethnic groups in Africa with virtually every skin tone under the sun, from the darkest black found among the Dinka of South Sudan to beige among the San of South Africa. Now, scientists have identified a few fresh gene variants that are in charge of producing this spectrum of colors. According to the peer-reviewed study the findings complicate the conventional theory of the evolutionary development of human skin. According to this theory, humanity first evolved dark skin in Africa, as a defense against the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation. Unexpectedly, some of the mutations that give Europeans lighter skin turn out to have a long history. Some populations that migrated to northern continents developed lighter skin to produce vitamin D more efficiently, in places with little sunlight. However, it wasn't a substantial change because in Africa as well as other parts of the world, various ethnic groups have adapted to their unique environments. Africa is not a region where all the people have dark skin because there is a vast difference in pigmentation. The first gene to be implicated in human skin color, MC1R, is highly variable in European populations but strikingly constant in African populations. Based on this pattern, some geneticists have hypothesized that any genetic variants that affected skin color were eliminated by natural selection in Africa due to the strong evolutionary pressure for dark skin. But that isn't actually true. In actuality, both for light and dark skin, the majority of the gene variants have a long history. 
long before the emergence of our own species, they probably first appeared in hominids like Homo erectus, where the genes coexisted peacefully for hundreds of thousands of years. Around 2 million years ago, Homo erectus strayed from Africa and into Eurasia. They inhabited a wide range of latitudes, so there is no reason to believe that over the course of a million years before they diverged into different species, they did not develop various skin tones. Indeed, the results of the study indicate that both light and dark genes at MFSD12, DDB1, OCA2, and HERC2 have been segregating in the hominin lineage for hundreds of thousands of years. Furthermore, the ancestral gene is associated with light pigmentation in about half of the predicted causal genes. Neanderthal and Denisovan genome sequences, which diverged from modern human sequences 804,000 years ago, also contain the ancestral gene. These observations are consistent with the hypothesis that darker pigmentation is a derived trait that originated in our genus, within the past two million years, after human ancestors lost most of their protective body hair. In fact, these ancestral hominins may have had medium skin tone, rather than dark pigmentation. Moreover, it appears that both light and dark pigmentation have continued to evolve over hominid history. In many instances, the older gene variant is in fact the cause of lighter skin, not darker skin. That is in line with the theory that early humans had pale skin similar to other primates. Scientists believe that as our ancestors transitioned from the forest to the savanna, they lost their hair and developed darker skin. As stated previously, light skin should be understood to not imply white skin, while darker skin should not be implied to mean black. Rather, the terms darker and lighter are referring to different shades of brown. The majority of scientists concur that the early hominids in Africa likely had light skin beneath hairy pelts. If you shave a chimpanzee, it has light skin tone because you don't need dark skin to protect yourself from ultraviolet UV radiation if you have body hair. Until recently, scientists believed that after our ancestors lost the majority of their body hair, before 2 million years ago, they quickly evolved dark skin to fend off skin cancer and other harmful UV radiation-related effects. Then, as people moved from Africa to the far north, their lighter skin developed as a response to the scarce sunlight. The researchers discovered four crucial regions of the genome where variation is closely related to variations in skin color. The regions include eight genetic variants that together account for 29% of the variation in skin color. This is an unexpectedly high percentage for such a complex trait, that almost certainly results from the combinatorial action of numerous genes. That picture was supported by earlier research on skin color genes. For instance, in the last 6,000 years, a depigmentation gene called SLC24A5 linked to fair skin spread throughout European populations. However, the evolution of skin tone is not a straightforward narrative. Although most humans are in fact shades of brown, sometimes we tend to think of skin tone as black and white. The first surprise was learning that SLC24A5, which swept through Europe, is also widespread in East Africa, with up to 50% of some Ethiopian and Tanzanian groups carrying the gene. This variant emerged 30,000 years ago, and was most likely brought to Eastern Africa by Middle Eastern migrants. Another possibility is that Ethiopians who traveled to the Middle East carried the gene with them. Despite the fact that many people in East Africa carry this gene, they do not have white skin, most likely because there are a number of other genes that also influence skin tone. Importantly, the variant does not lighten skin tone to the same extent in East African groups as it does in European groups. It serves as a stark reminder that a person may carry a gene that, in one population, confers a specific trait, but it does not necessarily manifest that trait in themselves. It serves as a reminder that we shouldn't assume that a fossil's skin color can be determined simply by the presence of a single genetic variant. In Africa, a large number of the gene variants that cause light skin in Europe are also present. The study also discovered ancient variants of the light-skinned Pygmy San people, which are common in two nearby genes called HERC2 and OCA2, which are associated with light skin, eyes, and hair in Europeans, but originated in Africa. The study suggests that the gene variants first appeared as much as a million years ago. To quote the study, coalescent analysis of the data set indicates that the most recent common ancestor, for the derived allele, is 996,000 to 1.2 million years ago. The MFSD12 gene was the subject of the most shocking discovery. People with the darkest skin have higher frequencies of two mutations that reduce this gene's expression. 
These variations first appeared around 500,000 years ago, indicating that humans and Neanderthals' ancestors may have had moderately dark skin before that time as opposed to a deep black color. There is no logical reason that ancient humans, who occupied many different environments one million years ago, including within Africa, would all be walking around with the same skin color. They would have been as diverse as humans are today, and probably even more so. There were likely even populations with dark skin, blue eyes, and blonde hair like we see in the Melanesians. In fact, Melanesians, Australian Aborigines, Papuans, and some Indians all share these two variants. These people might have inherited the variants from ancient African immigrants who traveled the southern route, from East Africa to Melanesia and Australia by way of the southern coast of India. That notion, however, conflicts with the findings of three recent genetic studies, which showed that Melanesians, Eurasians, and Australians are all descended from a single migration out of Africa. Alternatively, individuals who participated in this massive migration may have carried variants for both light and dark skin, though the dark variants later disappeared in most Eurasians. So researchers reduced the genes' expression in cultured cells to mimic the effects of the MFSD12 mutations in dark-skinned individuals in order to better understand how they contribute to darker skin. More eumelanin, the pigment that creates black and brown skin, hair, and eyes, was produced by the cells. This finding is a novel mechanism for generating extremely dark pigmentation. Ancient humans also developed different traits as a result of genetic drift as recently separated populations diverged as a result of random processes, a founder effect as remote areas were colonized by small pioneer groups and various sexual or cultural preferences. Surprisingly, the study discovered MFSD12, variants that were connected to both extremely dark and relatively light skin. In populations of Nilo-Saharan ancestry, which typically have very dark skin, as well as across sub-Saharan populations, with the exception of the San of Southern Africa, who typically have lighter skin, mutations in and around this gene that were associated with dark pigmentation were present at high frequencies. But given their highly dispersed present-day population, pygmies may have been driven from their ancestral homeland by encroaching black farmers. Only a few words and sounds from the original pygmy languages were retained, as the last few small bands of pygmies adopted the invaders' languages. All of this suggests that the Khorasan people and their languages once reached far north into Africa. However, like the Pygmies, the Khorasan were assimilated by the black population, leaving only a linguistic legacy to attest to their former presence. There are currently only 500,000 Pygmies dispersed among 150 million black Africans. This fragmentation suggests that Pygmy hunters were dispersed into small groups, and exiled from the equatorial forests prior to the arrival of black farmers. The Khorasan region of southern Africa is also surprisingly small for a people with such unique morphology and linguistics. Therefore, could the Khorasan have been more widespread in the ancient past, before their populations in the north were eliminated in some way? Could they even have lived outside of Africa, in Arabia for example? This could help explain why they have lighter skin tone, similar to modern people in that region. The diverse geography of Africa contributes to the diversity of its people. The driest deserts, biggest tropical rainforests, and tallest equatorial mountains can all be found on the only continent that stretches from the northern to the southern temperate zone. More than anywhere else, Africa has been home to humans for a very bloody long time. Our distant ancestors arrived there around 7 million years ago. Please check out all our other videos on human evolution and continue to explore the mysteries of our shared past. Until then, remember to embrace the uniqueness of our shared human heritage. Thank you for watching.